ザックお前からニュージャパンワールド認定 TV 王座必ず取ってやるよ新時代への第一歩今日踏ましてもらうぞ歴史が変わる一夜へようこそ All right then. Okay, I always take the piss with these comments. I'll give you a serious one. All right, how many? What, what's this? Fourth defense. We had the three tournament matches. All right, serious. Right, here we go. Right. Oh, I can't do it. Shota, Shota. Here, boy. Here, boy. Here. Koi, koi, koi. Shiny jacket for you. It's a shiny jacket for you, Shota. Come on, boy. Come on, boy. Go, 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 go. I'm glad he didn't take the piss. 第6試合ニュージャパンワールド認定 TV 選手権試合15分一本勝負を行います。All right, Chris, what do you like? Do you like 365 day records or do you like history in venue records? Well, what do you got? Let's let's see history in the in this venue. Well, Chris Samsa has provided, as always, great stat nuggets for us at the Chris Samsa on Twitter at SportaProWrestling.com. Funny you should mention the history in Ria Goku, as the shooter's making his way. So many times we see the great uh, sumo athletes make that same walk. Uh, Zack Sabre Jr. has not won a singles match at Ria Goku since the 2017 G1 Climax Tournament when he beat Toma Hiroishi in 15 plus. Hey, look at that! And he came out hard camera aside as well. But Shota Umino, before that World TV Championship graphic came on the air, that mysterious video we've been seeing across all the venues now with all this new text. Destruction, monster, prepare yourself, rampaging, invasion. Suddenly Shota Umino presents the exact opposite of those ideals. And it, it took a lot of him to convince Zack Sabre Jr. And he certainly convinced Zack Sabre Jr. convinced the world that he could beat him, but he took 26 minutes and 12 seconds to do it. The question is tonight whether he can do that in half the time. Don't block, get out of my way. Get out of my way, you ugly young lion. I wanted to see Shooter. Blocking my view, you jabron. It could have been me! It could have been me getting that bracelet! Nakashima was in my way! My kid's 10 years old. I never grew up. No, we love ourselves some Shota Umino, who's been just, again, had that presence since he was a young lion. And I think the world TV title might be perfect for him because he's not shy about carrying the entire world on his shoulders. Reminded everybody at the press conference the other day that the world TV championship was designed as a title driven around young talents. And said that since Zack Sabre Jr. beat Brent Narrington for that title, the Wrestle Kingdom, Narrington was probably the chosen son as far as NJPW World were concerned. But Umino now wants to take that title back to its original intentions. They always say it's for the young guys. And then it winds up being 39 year old. Hey, Zack Sabre Jr. is not 39. Well, I'm going back to the never title deal. <laughs> Well, the point is, Kevin, they can say as much as you like. It's for the young guys. It's for the foreign guys. It's for this, it's for that. Any championship in professional wrestling is about being the best. Yes. And Zack Sabre Jr. is the absolute best inside of 15 minutes because that's what this NJPW World TV Championship is all about at the end of the day. Never mind the bollocks. Here's pro wrestling. And here comes Zack Sabre Jr.
Look at you, you look awesome. Jose Fujita holding the ropes open. The official young lion of TMDK. New Japan World Nintendo TV Champion, the Frontman, Zack Sabre Jr. And it'll be 15 minutes on the clock. The reminder is ever. The champion doesn't have to beat the challenger. The challenger has to beat the champion. And for again, for a new title that's built, you know, supposedly around the young guys, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, that's the way the television championships were always done. Fast time limits, because again, you've got to fit within the construct of television. So a 15 minute time limit is perfect. You've got to beat the champ within 15, or it's a time limit draw. All right, Shot, are you ready to catch it? Shota Umino with a wrap still on his thumb, suffered in the semifinal defeat to David Finley. Bell sounds, and we're off to the races, and a sunset flip, and it's in three seconds. No. <laughs> Wait a second. Hold on. Hey, almost had him. Look at the stack. No, countered. And almost three. Shota's making a claim for the title. That's Zach Sabre Jr. came up to the same sort of system that I once trained in, just in a, a much different level, obviously, was Zach Sabre Jr. And that was a regular, regular drill in the old NWA Hammerlock days. Pinning combinations, get in, get out as fast as possible. That training coming to hand for Zach Sabre Jr. right there. But look at Shota Umino, able to utilize that same. Now, some of that training, of course, is filtered over and is part of the curriculum, I'm sure, of the Nogue Dojo. But Shota's time in the UK also benefiting him as well. We'll be mindful of the time. We'll be paying attention to our timekeeper, who is off to our right for the time calls. I think the difference is that Shota Umino has learned that style, whereas Zack Sabre Jr. has it Almost intuitive, you know, he said so many times, I don't even know what I'm gonna do. Exactly it's, right. It's second nature to him. It's the difference between you know, learning Japanese or learning English as a second language and being very fluent, being very proficient, but you're not a native speaker. Correct. That Zack Sabre Jr. is. That's why I think even though it took twice as, almost twice as long as our time limit here today, Shota's victory over Zack Sabre Jr. in the New Japan Cup cannot be overlooked. And as they had always been termed the European uppercut forearm. Continental distinguishments aside, that's why Sabre was very upset about Brexit oh. this whole time. Yeah, let's go. Let's pay import to you on every one. Yes. That tax. Sabre, that bad record in New Goku, you know, with a distinct lack of a record in New Goku, but this venue means a lot. See his mentor John Moxley made his debut and we were sitting right here. 2019. Yeah, blew the doors off of uh, Juice Robinson, then came back in the G1 and did the exact same thing to Taichi. And listen, Shota Umino and the young, all the Young Lions, they don't get to wrestle in Ryukoku very much. There's not enough room on the card for Young Lion matches. All killer, no filler. That's why they and the drop kick to the knee. That's why opportunities like this are precious. Another drop kick to the knee. Well done. Oh, beautiful 
nice sweep of the other leg, transitions over. Nice knee bar. Shota's ability to occupy and almost push off of the base leg of Zach led to the trip and led to the knee bar, which almost led to the World TV title. And Zach is protesting that exact move with referee Marty Asami, who has no idea what's going on. I think that match in the New Japan Cup for Shoichi Umino against Zack Sabre Jr. was the absolute perfect opponent for him at this standpoint, at this point in his career. And it would be easy to sniff at a show to Umino entering through the crowd as he drops Zack Sabre Jr. face first and gets caught. Wrapped. for people to sniff at Shota Umino as, oh yeah, John Moxley's boy, right. Using the Death Rider for a finish. Or, oh yeah, here's a Tanahashi lookalike. Here, being in this environment, a real struggle for survival inside of 15 minutes against Zack Sabre Jr. He has to think on his feet. He has to be his own man. Shota Umino's left thumb was termed a sprain, but it was damn near broken. And it was a situation where Shoto was propelled into the second rope, put out his thumb, put out his hand to stop his momentum. And it was there that his thumb was injured. That happened against David Finley. Notice so that end to your point, Kevin Zack Sabre Jr. not targeting that injured left no. side, going with the right hand side. Is any uh, Catch strained wrestler will always target the left side of the body. It's a, it's an unwritten, it's a gentleman's agreement that you leave your right hand free so that you can go to work on Monday morning. Right. And here, Saber showing that honor among thieves, so to speak, and going with the right here. Uh, it's also the forearming arm that Shota Umino has more than been able to measure himself up with Zach. For the drop kick, Zach out of the way. Oh, here we go again. Second try this time, got it. I think we're about halfway through our 15 minute time limit. We'll be paying attention to the time call. The first one we'll hear will be 10, which means five to go. And if necessary, three, two, one, 30 seconds and so on. Fisherman, suplex, clasp the hands too. Another reason why Zach targeting that right arm. They are believing in Shota Umino. It's a big ask, a lot of weight, and Ocelot does it. Save out the back door, here we go, Cobra Twist, perhaps. I'm gonna tell him you said that, and he'll be very thankful. And he's cotton. For a vegan to have the, the, the musculature, the size, the frame of Zack Sabre Jr. While still maintaining that fluidity, that flexibility, show to getting to the ropes. And Zach may have positioned himself on the apron of the ring. Let's see. What, oh, how about that? A big surprise. Classic. They call it a double leg Nelson back in the day. Now, Brian Chansey got those hooks in. And I think he's going to try and pitch Sabre here. See if he can do it. No. Zack Sabre Jr. has been in control of this entire exchange since he positioned himself on the apron of the ring. He's five, ten moves ahead. But now, 
Sabre dropped. And Umino is going to hoist him up again, try and roll into a second. No, that almost had reverse Bloody Sunday instead. Two, and Zack Sabre Jr., who was in control, has lost control because of the power and determination of Shota Umino. We're getting real close to five minutes left in the time. Here he comes. That arm will go straight. Did for Bolton Oleg in his debut. Yeah. Oh, watch out, shoulders down. And now the arm goes straight. He's got to tap or he'll lose that arm, Kevin. Who knows, he's got about five seconds or less to improve his position here. That arm is going to go. That arm is going to go. Now on the bridge to... Oh, just barely. Will, Will and oh, now no. he's in. He's in Barney right now. Class in session. The Kose feeds them, making notes at ringside of Herman. Oh, and that one extra rotation. Ten minutes by yeah, five minutes left. Yep. Stole one. Time of fact here, we've got about three left. <laughs> Neck breaker all the way around. Jumps on for the cover with the leg hook. He doesn't seem to be panicking or pressing, even though the seconds are dwindling. I think he's more focused on survival than the time right now. Death Rider. Oh! Blocked! In Zagiri wobbles the legs of the television champion who comes forward! And falls! Save back of the net, but that was a fingertip save for Shota Umino. And there are no penalty shootouts in this situation. Once the whistle blows, that's it. Death Rider, Death Rider, no. champion to be crowned after a second. No! Yeah! Oh! How did he do it? How could you 
hate on a guy that's as good as Zack Sabre Jr. is. My God! And look, as Umino pounds the man in frustration, what he has to take home with him for all the talk of a paradigm shift and something new. Umino needs something new. We just learned the Death Rider not enough to get it done on Zack Sabre Jr. He had nothing else left. That Hamman DDT, okay, then I'll go for another one. That's where the counter happened. And that's, for me, that's got to be the biggest take, take home. And I think, again, a lot of times with young guys, with young teams, they get to the precipice of glory, they fall short, and, and the conversation that, well, we need to change some things. I don't think it requires wholesale. I think it needs just a little bit of garnish. He got away from the STF. He was working on the leg, working on the leg, was never able to get back to the STF. Never able to get there. The time is coming. The time is coming for Shota Umido. I know we keep saying that. Is it ready yet? It's not ready yet. Is it ready yet? It's not ready yet. When will it be ready? As my mother would say, it'll be ready when it's ready. Bloody Techers, Techers all the way. Oh, Kevin, the boy's pretty good, isn't he? He sure is. The boy's pretty good. That was close to come that close calls. Well, listen. Smart strategy, go after that right arm. Yeah. Affecting the forearms. I thought it was brilliant. I mean, you'd almost think I was the best technical wrestler in the world, Kevin. Some might say. It's the first, first real big cheering show backer. TMDK. Awesome. We're rocking, mate. Can't wait. Rocking like the young punks we are. It's a big night for TMDK. Next, the tag title match, I'm going to be paying very close attention. And then Robbie, the geezer of the skies, geezer. he's going to be the next junior heavyweight champion. Kev, Kev, we've got to get you a, uh, a British Aussie uh, slang name, haven't we? Please. The geezer of the skies, Kev. I think you're 10 Bev Kev. 10 Bev Kev. 10 Bev Kev. I love it. Tell me later what that means, because it's probably salacious. The Bev. It's a bevy, it's a beverage kit. Oh, good. So you can, you know. Don't worry about the time limit, dickhead. What'd he say? Never mind. Hey, Marty, it's a good thing you only have to count to three. Yes. Marty Asami. That's you. That's you. Sleeping on the job. What's this?